Hey, what's up, y'all? We back, y'all. You already know, Defiant Legacy, another episode. I'm your host, Steve Elijah, and we got my man, Marquise Robinson, man, here. What's going on, man? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. Grateful to see another day, man. You know, grateful to be on here uh, with the opportunity to speak to you and your audience, bro. So I appreciate the opportunity, man. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you, man. Welcome to the show. Um, I already know gems are going to be dropped. This is going to be a powerful, powerful episode. Talk about real estate wholesaling and real estate as a whole. Um, and it sucks, man, because even before we started recording, we already had a dope conversation. Right, right, and, right. And you know, we, we, already, can, we, can, we can run it back for the people. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to? We going to. I think <laughs> a lot of people need to hear these things about, you know, just this overall dialogue. Um, right. So for those that may not know, man, could you just give us a little bit uh, of an intro about who it is that you are and what it is that you bring to the table and what it is that you do? Uh, sure, man. Uh, you know, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very uh, down to earth person. I mean, if you look at my page, I'm really not flashy like that. Um, I'm a real estate investor here in Atlanta. Uh, me and my partner, we run a company called uh, Skyview Acquisitions. Uh, it's primarily a wholesaling real estate business. Uh, we do do a little bit of fix and flip as well. Excuse me, for, for, your, for the people who do not know what wholesaling is, it's an exit strategy where we find off-market properties, right? We put those properties under contract and we sell them to other investors. We usually market to distressed sellers, whether it's someone going through divorce, tax delinquent on the property, or absentee owner that may live, let's say, in Connecticut, but they own property in California. Mm -hmm. What's the odds of that person seeing that property every day and keeping the maintenance up unless they have some type of property manager? So that's primarily what I do on a daily basis. Um, I'm an investor. I invest in other things in real estate as well. But I mean, you know, humble beginnings, man. I grew up in South Georgia. I'm pretty sure you all can tell with this Southern accent that I have. Um, I grew up in South Georgia for the most part, man. I, I was always in entrepreneurship. I was always in the business at an early age. I mean, I started selling candy, Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball Z cards, uh, Dragon Ball Z pictures until my mom shut that business down because, you know, I was running up her ink, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, color ink, not free, right? Yeah, no, facts, facts. You know, that was my first taste of uh, free enterprise and business. Yeah. And um, I kind of, you know, I kind of went from there, went to college and stuff like that. Um, I started a t-shirt business, um, you know, selling Greek pair for day. I'm in a fraternity, so. You know, that's kind of my, my my second taste of business. So, and I just kind of went from there, man. You know, I worked at Verizon selling phones and that's kind of really where I really cut my teeth in the sales industry. You know, I kind of understood the psychology behind sales and negotiation. And I, I would say from there, man, I started teaching because that's actually what I went to school for, teaching. Um, and I didn't like it. I didn't make any money. I wasn't happy. I didn't feel as if I could really have an effect on my community. You know what I mean? The way I thought I would. Because again, in, in education, people don't really talk about this. It's a lot of politics in education. Mm. They're, they're telling you exactly what they want you to teach and how to teach it, unfortunately. So I knew as, as an entrepreneur, I would show people in my community that, hey, you can really come up in, in, in America uh, through business and entrepreneurship. And, I, you know, I just want to show them that, man, the proof is in the, pud in the pudding, if you will. And you can really get to some money and, and really make some moves out here legitimately. You know, and that's kind of what keeps me going on a daily basis, hoping to show, you know, young, young black uh, males and females that, Man, business business is the key. You can have one or two jobs and play in the league for a certain amount of time, but you can have a business forever, a multiple yeah. business forever. That outlive that outlive you. You know what I mean? So, and so I mean, it's kind of sounded like you had that hustler spirit for a while. Absolutely, you know, you're going from you know selling phones, but to being a teacher, and then you jump into real estate wholesaling. So, what was like? Was there a moment when you were a teacher and you just said, "All right, you know what." I got to make it. Change. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. that I mean, my last teaching stop was here in Georgia. Right. And it was in one of the uh, better school districts, if you will. Mm -hmm. It was still an issue with the students. You know, they they still I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. The, the way things are going now, a lot of kids. First of all, the public education system, in my opinion, and you tell me how you feel is outdated. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids coming up, they're leaning more towards entrepreneurship and trades and skills. These kids are better suited, in my opinion, to learn how to trade stocks and options and stuff like, you know, something that's kind of more tangible as opposed to a one-size-fit-all model. So that kind of clicked to me. And I'm like, man, I'm getting paid once a month, dude. I'm getting paid once a month, making barely two grand. Really probably less than two grand out of taxes, now that I think about it. Um, and I was like, man, this is, I'm not happy, number one. I'm not feeling as if I can make the impact on my community that I thought I would make as a teacher, you know, being able to mold the students at such a young age. And I had to just take a step back and say, okay, the kids in my community, they want to see one, someone that has made it. 
come back and talk to them. Mm-hmm. Because if you yeah. made it, they'll listen to you more because they're looking at they're looking at what you have and what you've accomplished and said, okay, maybe this guy is on to something. But if I'm in the classroom every day with them, they're they're not gonna respect it as much. They're gonna respect you as a man and as an adult, but on that next level of really listening to what you have to say and really taking it in and taking it home with them, it, it, it just was a difficult connection for me. They got to see it. They got to see it. It's, that's, that's it's like today's generation, man. Was oh, yeah, man. They got to see it because people got to understand. They got the phone, they're on YouTube. They want to see it. So now if I come to them and say, hey, I run a six-figure business, right? I'm from a similar background as you. My mom wasn't married uh, to my dad. You know, similar similar background. They're yeah. like, okay, man, wow, okay, this guy has a story because it resonates. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's and the biggest thing. It's it's relatable. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But absolutely. Even though, like, so that was your moment, right? But who introduced you um, to real estate wholesaling? Because even though that you know it's starting, right. I guess, become a little bit more uh, popular now. Right. Was there a, a person, or was there like a YouTube video or a conference that you? Oh yeah, man, of course, man. Um, to be honest, uh. I really wanted to be an agent, which is a lot of people don't believe this when I said I really wanted to be an agent because traditionally, when you hear about real estate, what's the first thing that pops in most people's head? Real estate agent. Yeah. Showing houses, closing deals, nice, you know, nice suits and nice, nice outfits and stuff. My cousin, she's a broker. She was an agent at the time, but she's a broker now. She broke the pay structure down to me for ages. And the numbers just didn't make sense to me. Hmm. She was saying, hey, starting off, you'll get 80%. Uh, first, let me back up. So agents, when they sell a property, if they're only representing one side of the transaction, they get 3%. So for the people at home, if you sell a hundred thousand dollar house, you will get three grand. But if you're a new agent, you're splitting that 80, 20 with a broker or some type of, let's just, let's just be nice and say 50, 50, right? Yeah. So now you're taking home $1,500, right? And then you have to pay broker fees and stuff like that. So it's about 1200. So if you do the math, it starts, That's about it, what it I was making as a teacher. It starts come down, yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to do that. That doesn't make sense, right? Because I'll be driving around the city all day, and I won't have a guaranteed paycheck. So um, I, I think I went to a seminar, a guy named Than Merrill, who's a former football uh, player. Yeah. Right. He gets everybody right yeah, off. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, know, people run to the back of the table. They they spend their life savings and sign up for his, uh, his course or whatever. <laughs> it's ironic because I'm about to release my course, so I'm not knocking this off. What, what, what was he there? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. He had, he had some representatives from his team there. The Than Merrill team was there. So um, I kind of got on YouTube. I typed in real estate investing. And, you know, I started to see some agents. I was like, ah, it's not for me. And then I ran across a video. I want to say, I think it was Jay Morrison. He was talking about real estate investing. And I, again, reson- it resonated with me. I'm like, man, this guy looks like me. He talks like me. Swag like me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Let, let me see what this guy is talking about. Excuse me. So I, I saw his some of his stuff and I just started consuming it, man. And then ironically, I heard on the radio about a real estate investing seminar. And it was a fly. I saw a flyer somewhere, man. I met, you know, the thing about YouTube, I think it has the algorithms or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they, they YouTube can tell. One yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Marketing. the Dan Merrill thing popped up on YouTube. That's what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was listening to some, I was listening to something on the radio about real estate investing, the little commercials or whatever. But on YouTube, the Dan Merrill thing popped up. Dan Merrill's gonna be in Tampa. I was living in Florida at the time. It's gonna be in Tampa on June 5th through the 6th, or whatever the date was. Mm-hmm. Meet here, it's going to be free. I'm like, man, I'm broke. It's free real estate. Let me go and maybe I'll meet some people. Because at that time I was trying to transition and really start thinking differently. You know what I mean? So I went to that seminar and I got an understanding of somewhat of what wholesaling was. So I went home. I bought a book off of Amazon about real estate investing. And I just continued to research. Hmm. Wholesaling appealed to me because little to no money. It really was. It's really more hustle than investing if you think about it. So that's kind of what that's kind of what attracted me to it. But I felt as if I didn't have the resources in Florida to get that done. So I moved back to Georgia, uh, you know, where I'm from. I moved back to Atlanta where I had a lot of connections. And I mean, it kind of went from there. And I got a mentor here in Atlanta, started working with him and it took off. Bet, bet, bet. And you mentioned little to no money. So I, right. I want to make sure everybody knows that it sounds as if real estate wholesaling is one of those things where you may not need a bag to get started. Because, you know, no, no, sir. open up a business, you know, sometimes people need, you know, upfront costs. But little yeah. to no money. Hey y'all, please listen. No, to you don't know LLC. None of that. None. You, it's it's really not fancy. It's more of a hustle. 
you know, it's simple. You reach out to people who may want to sell a product, right? Um, I was doing a technique called driving for dollars, right? When I yes, got that list, yes. I would drive around the neighborhoods um, in, in Atlanta, specifically on the west side of Atlanta. It's a lot of abandoned homes, right? Either the people they passed away, the property they didn't pay the taxes and things like that. And like I, I gave the example earlier, absentee. It yeah. may be an owner that lives in Connecticut, but they have property in Georgia and they don't really come see it like that. So I would drive around the west side of Atlanta and just find a hun- hundreds of homes, man. It was a website called, um, what was that? Web? Been Verified, right? It was like $19 a month, 20 bucks a month, man. I would go to Been Verified, type in the address, and a phone number would pop, pop up. I would call every number, you know, that pop that popular, yeah, yeah. right? I would email every email. Hey, my name is Marquise. I'm a real estate investor. I was wondering if you'd be interested in selling your property. I would go on and on and on and on and on. I would get cussed out. I'd get threatened to be sued. You know, the whole nine. But yeah, I yeah, kept yeah. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. You know, it's it's like I, I, I refer to like sports, man. Yeah, you know, if you bat 300%, which is 30%, you're Hall of Famer in baseball. You just got to keep shooting your shot, yeah, man. You just got to think about the numbers. You know, it's the numbers. numbers game. You just got to keep shooting your shot. So I kept calling people. I found this one guy. It's funny. I emailed him, man. I was I was sending people messages on Facebook Messenger as well. That's how bad I won. Because think about it. They're going to see my Facebook page and, and probably look at me and say, okay, this guy's not really an investor. He looks pretty young. But it was a risk I was taking. Hey, but you took that so, next step, though. Like you Exactly. You know, like, most people, it. they'll stop when they get that first no. You know, I tell people the no's are just getting you quicker to a yes. Mm. That's anything. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I reached out to the guy, emailed the guy. Come to find out he was a paralegal. He had got hit by a semi-truck. And he had a kid on the way. Uh, it, it was some chick he was dating up in North Carolina. This guy was like probably 53. Mm. Crazy, right? With a two-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless. <Whoa. laughs> he, yeah. I'm like, okay. Why? He's like, hey, yeah, man, man, I need Atlanta. Money, man. You know, I'm getting some money from this settlement. I just talked to my attorney. I'm just going to go ahead and liquidate the asset and call it a day. You know, and I'm just going to use the money that you paid me to pay, to give her some money to take care of my kid, my newborn, my two-year-old or whatever. And the money from the car wreck, I'm going to use that to hopefully get on my feet and buy me a car. True story. I met the guy. It was a sketchy guy. I met him at a um, at a Burger King in Bankhead. It's, it's the neighborhood in, in the west side of Atlanta where um, mm-hmm. T.I. Killer Mike, a lot of rappers yep, grew up yep. there. You met him at the uh, area. On the west side, yep, Bankhead yeah. on the west side of Atlanta. I'll never forget it. 2522 Godfrey Drive, Northwest Atlanta, 30318. I'll never forget that property. I rode by it two weeks ago. Just to humble myself, you know what right. I mean? And this was your first deal. My first deal. We got it on the contract. I had a mentor at the time. Um, and, and that's another thing. A lot of people don't understand the importance of paying for value and education. I was paying this guy to teach me the business because some of the things I was going through, he had already been through. This guy was in the business 20 years. You know, so I would pay him. I was spending my last, you know, to really invest. I'm not telling people to do that, but that's just how bad I wanted. it. I was paying this guy a couple hundred dollars a month. You know what I mean? I I turned off my uh cable bill. Mm-hmm. Only thing I had was Wi-Fi, water, of course. Um, a le- you know, a yeah, yeah. you were able to survive. You're able to survive. I, yeah, okay. I was surviving, bro. And I was just going to the gym, coming home, listening to podcasts, and uh, really, bro, just eating. I mean, ham and cheese sandwiches. Like I was really locked in. I was giving all my money to this guy to teach me this business because he was showing me the results of his other students. We were kind of like in a group. You know what I mean? So that kind of helped me. Mo- that kept me yeah. motivated because one guy in the group he closed a deal for ten grand. I'm like, man, ten grand. I never saw ten grand before. Never ever. I mean, if you do, if you add up my pay for twelve months as a teacher, that's what ten. That, that's not that much. That's almost a little bit more. It's more than that. But and you know what I mean? It, host, the, the thing about wholesaling, right, is that it's one check, right? It's like, one you, check. You did it right there. Not ten thousand. Like okay, spread across. Right. You know, like so it's so it's. Ten, I'm like, man, dude, you made half of my teaching salary in one day. So long story short, we got the property on the contract for 15 grand, right? We sold oh. it to an investor. Yeah. Met the guy at the Burger King. I was, man, I was so nervous, man. I'm, I was nervous. I mean, the guy, he was sketchy. He was asking me all these questions that I didn't know. Who's your closing attorney? How much earnest money are you putting up? I'm like, bro, I don't know, bro. Sign my contract, bro. <laughs> Come on now. Find somebody to buy your little house for 15 grand. Well, I want 15 grand, nothing less, dude. And I know your name. I'm like, okay, 
You know, I, yeah. <laughs> but he signed the contract at the Bird King. <laughs> uh, and we got it for 15K. We sold it to another investor here in Atlanta for 55 grand two weeks later. Wow. But you know what, though? Let me, let me pause that story real quick to make sure everyone knows. So you got under contract for 15000 Right. Did you need or did you have $15,000 to give him? I did not. I think we okay, put yeah, maybe $100 on the contract part, for earnest money. And for people who do not know earnest money, EMD is just earning money, earnest money deposit. Basically saying, hey, I am interested in buying the property. This is how much money I'm going to put up and what I'm willing to lose. 100 bucks. I didn't have 100 bucks, but my mentor did. So you signed a contract for 15000 but you didn't have yep. 15000 Okay, yep. and that's legal, y'all, right? That's, you know. Yep, that's legal. Yep, yep. Um, but, but did you have something in your contract where it was like, all right, if I can't get this to a buyer within 30 days, then the contract is debted? Did Absolutely. Have- so okay. it, in, in the contract, and again, I, my contracts are very, very ironclad, if you will. They, they protect the investor. We have a stipulation in our contract that says closing is contingent upon the funding partner's approval. Hmm. The funding partner it could be you, could be someone from the audience. It could be, I don't know, your dog or something like that. Something, yeah, so yeah. That's, yeah, that stipulation protects us. And also, it's another clause in there that states that um, if we do not buy the property, the seller can collect the earnest money, which mm. was a hundred dollars. Yeah, but I mean, you know, so, that, that's that's the at that know. point I was willing to risk the hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's what I say. I think you can survive. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? I can you survive, know. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good little pro versus con. So, so two so two things right there. Just just to name a few. Two things right there yeah. that I have in there to protect. Yep. Yeah, and that's definitely dope. Um, so it's crazy one to, to know that you got the property for 15,000. But one thing right. that I want to identify too is that you found out his situation. Mm-hmm. Right? It wasn't just okay, I like this crib so I'm about you you got to the bottom of why. Absolutely. You know and I you know it's funny bro, I still do that today mm-hmm. even with my team. I have I have acquisition specialists in the office. They're basically sales reps. That's what they do. They call and ask you questions. We do not make offers if you can't tell me a fantastic for. Mm-hmm. Why you want to sell the property, your timeline to sell the property, condition of the property, and condition of, condition of the property and price. So price, timeline, why, condition. I need to know those four things. Why? So when it's time to negotiate, I can use that to get the price, the property at the price that I needed at. Make sense? Yeah. 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 Well, hey, sir, I know you were telling me you want to sell the property quickly. Well, I can I can get this done quickly, but I would need it at forty thousand instead of fifty thousand. Well, sir, I know you told me it needs a new roof on it. That's about 5K. And then you told me it needs some more flooring and stuff like that. That's about 10K in repairs. I can do it at 40,000 instead of 50,000. Make sense? I'm with you. It's all psychology. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm with you, though. And, and so the good thing, though, is, too, is you're able to talk like that once you've got, you know, more rhythm. and, and Absolutely. More, you know, Absolutely. Game. And but keep so, in mind, and keep in mind, I learned sales at Verizon. So me, as you can tell, I'm an extrovert anyway. Mm-hmm. I, have, I love to talk to people. And at Verizon, they taught us a thing called discovery. Mm. I don't know. If it, do you remember? Have you been, uh, before COVID? Did you remember going in phone stores when you want to upgrade a phone or mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that? As soon as you walked in, they jumped on you, man. Oh yeah, that's, that's what that's, they taught us to be aggressive like that. Foot locker. That, I mean, right, yeah. right. Hey man, what you need? Hey man, what you need? So and I was I was kind of used to talking to people and really kind of like getting to know them and really building rapport and stuff like yeah. that and figuring out what's going on. Yeah. So when you talk about building rapport and sales, how important is it? Um, like, what would you say if you had to, I guess, choose one between developing the rapport versus the person and really analyzing the house for the deal that it's worth? You know, oh, easily, like obviously- easily, easily, easily. That's easy. The person, the property, the property is just a numbers game. Mm. It is no emotion. The person is where, is where you make the money at, because if they're confident and they trust you know, that you're going to get the job done, they'll take less money. If you figure out what's going on with them, I tell my guys, stop selling and start and start solving. What does that mean? Stop trying to sell them on why they should be working with us and solve the damn problem. Excuse my language and solve the problem. Once you solve the problem, they'll take less money. Once you solve the problem, they'll give you more time to get the deal done. Once you solve the problem, they'll be more open to tell you what's going on if they have more properties to sell as well. So stop selling and start solving. It's psychology, man. It's people. It's a conversation, not an interrogation. I tell them that all the time. Like, it's just conversation, man. Seriously. It, we talking. I, the way I talk to the people, I, they treat me like family. But does They're that come, happy to talk to me again. Does that come easily, though? And the reason why I ask is because I feel like sometimes, as, especially as a new wholesaler, right. someone might try to get into the game and just want money. So like, it's like, right. yo, I got to get a contract. I got to. It, it, 
I would say it does not come easily, but part of it is you have to be coachable. Mm. If you if you're just in it for the money, you 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 don't care. I mean, because that's what separates hustlers from businessmen. Because if you're a businessman or businesswoman, you're gonna take the time to hone in and get great at your craft, right? LeBron James, for example, he's magnificent at getting better at his craft. He learns something new and adds it to his game every year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're serious about being a not even just a wholesaler, a real estate investor, Fact. you're going to continue to educate yourself on different exit strategies. You're also going to educate yourself on better ways to get the deal done. And how can I help the seller more? Because at the end of the day, it's really about helping the seller, man. The money's going to come because you provide the value. But yeah. a lot of sellers, that's what a lot of wholesalers, that's what they form the, the, the bag at. They want to get paid, get paid, get paid. Fact, fact, Instead fact. of taking 5K on this deal, make 20 on the next deal, they want to make 40,000 on every deal. It, it yeah. doesn't work. You got to like save that. for the fences, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But talk to me about how you address uh, rejection. Um, okay. So obviously, you've been in sales, but it's specifically wholesaling. Is there like a tactic that you have that says, all right, you know, they're not rocking with me right now, but here I'm, I'm going to hit them with this to see how they're Absolutely. Um, my, my question, my thing is this. I always ask them, so if you, if you don't mind me asking, sir, um, I mean, if, if you don't get the price that you're asking, I mean, what's, go, what's going to be your next, uh, what, what are you going to do next? Do you, do you see your problem getting better or worse if you, if you don't mm -hmm. decide to sell it at this price? Mm -hmm. I ask them, like, I'm transparent. Okay, so, sir, have you thought about listing the property? Are you serious about selling the property right now? Or you think you need more time? I always like to keep that line of communication open because, again, it's a relationship business because you may call them back in three months. One or two things may happen. They may be ready to sell or number two, hey, man, oh, man, Marquise, man, it was nice talking to you again. I'm still not ready to sell my property, but my sister, she mm. wants to sell one across the street. Mm. I was telling about you, you know, one thing I like about you, man, you wasn't really pushy in the sales. You, you know, you just checking on me. You wasn't really pushy. So I told her about you and she's ready to do business. You made 20K on that deal. A couple months later, you come back with the follow-up because that's where the money is. In the, the money is in the follow-up. You follow up with that person again. After you do good business with her sister, she'll sell that house to you. Mm. So that, that's my thing. The rejection is not, it, it's normal. I go into it expecting, I go into it expecting something like that. You know, because mm. I tell my guys, the sellers are emotional about this okay because most people only buy one to three properties their whole life most people only buy one property which is their primary residence you have some people that buy one to two maybe three right mm -hmm. so people that are a little bit more savvy but for the most part one property maybe three and most sellers are emotional we're not emotional because it's business for us it's another day i look at a thousand properties a week but to them that's their baby that's their yeah. main that's their property they invested in they grew up in it. They invested in it. They, uh, they left it to their kids. All kind of stuff. It's emotional. So my guys, they have to understand that when they're talking to the sellers and understand it's different types of sellers also. Mm, facts. Okay, so tap into that. There's different types oh, it's, of sellers. It's, it's different types of sellers, right? You have what we call a red. This is the person, hey, man, how much money are you going to give me, bro? Listen, I get calls all, all day, sir. How much money are you going to give me? Well, hey, sir, my objective here is to, you know, get you the most money in a short amount of time. Did you have a price in mind? Oh, man, I told you to make me an offer. Okay, I can definitely do that. Now, before I make you that offer, sir, uh, ballpark-wide, where would you like to be? Because, you know, you sound like a straight-up guy, and so am I. So I just want to shoot it straight to you and get the job done. That's a red. The next type of seller, easy-going type of seller. It's not that they're not motivated. They need to be pushed a little bit. Sir, could you tell me a little bit about the house? I mean, man, what do you want to know? Um, How many rooms in there? I think it's three or two. Okay, sir. So let me ask you this, sir. I, I You know, it sounds like it's a nice property. What do I need to do to get some business done with you and make this happen for you? You know, take this off your hand and make your day a little bit easier, huh? Well, I mean, if you're going to give me a certain price, I may be able to do it. Okay, I know you say you may be able to do it. What, what does that certain price look like to you? You know, again, I, I, don't want, I don't want this to be a rash decision for you, sir, so I know you want to take your time, but I just want to let you know I'm on the same page with you, man. Let's see what we can work out. Do you see how my tone changed? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. It's simple. And then you have you have another type of seller. We call them analytical. Okay, how much earnest money are you putting out? Who's your attorney? Where's your attorney located? What's their address? What's their phone number? Where's your business located? In? Are you with the BBB? Absolutely. I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. Uh, once we get off this phone call, what's a good email for you? 
I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and send you over a company commitment statement. It tells you about our company, what we're going to commit to you, right? Number two, I'm going to send you over an intro email, introducing myself with a video so you can put a name with a face. But most importantly, I'm going to send you over my company website so you can take a look at us and our BBB website as well. We're registered there as well, sir. So, you know, I, I know with everything going on, there's so many scammers and stuff like here out here. You, you, you want to be comfortable with who you're doing business with. I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. I like to dot my eyes and cross my T's as well. Just that simple, man. Yeah, just, just, just being nice. You know, being I, I, nice, being relatable. You see, right, right, to be able right. to pick up on that type of stuff. Yeah, but you know what though? If, with that example, that was a phone call conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever uh, tried texting or like door knocking in terms of finding fellas? Have you tried? Um, I wouldn't say door knocking. Texting, we do texting. We do text blasts and cold call marketing all day. So, I have one guy that sends out texts all day. I have a script that he sends out to every person all day, mm -hmm. and the address changes every time. Okay. And it's a system in place where you can just literally copy and paste and send it to multiple sellers. Oh, actually, now, yeah, my, my whole my whole business is systematized. So from the start, um, I, I, I again I'm from I'm from Georgia, man. We love Chick-fil-A. I make a joke out of this all the time when I talk to people. The thing we the thing about Chick-fil-A and why they're so successful is systematized to a T. Every time you go, hey, how are you? What do you want? You tell them what you want. Okay, it's my pleasure. Next stop, they're either gonna give you a receipt or give you food, right? Yep. Every time. My business is the same way as conveyor belt. They talk to the marketing team, which is our cold callers in, in the Philippines, and my text blast guy in the Philippines. Mm. That's the first line of contact. If you sound like you're serious and you're below a certain price threshold, you send it to my CRM, and my guys in the office talk to you next. Once they talk to you, they're going to make offers and negotiate, right? Mm. Once they place you on the contract, they send it over to my transaction coordinator, Right. She's going to be the one telling you about attorneys and things like that. She's going to uh, talk to you about, okay, what paperwork she needs to close the deal out, okay? Next step is you're going to talk to somebody from my dispositions department. Mm. They sell all the property to uh, the other investors. I do not talk to other investors. They do it and they sell them off, okay? That's where my business partner comes in. Same, next thing they do is they go on inspections and they go look at your house and things like that with the other investors, right? Once the inspection is complete, they send me a report, they send my partner a report, and they send any paperwork from the other buy, the other investor that's buying it from us to the attorney. We close the deal, move on to the next one. It's mm -hmm. a bill. We did 250K uh, last Wednesday off that. Say mm -hmm. that. Say that. Say, quarter million did, dollars in a day. You did Six. you did a quarter mil in a day, real estate yes, wholesaling? Yes, sir. Thank you for the title of this episode, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all, man. So it's a system, man. It takes time, but I mean. Again, I mean, you go to go to Walmart, go to Publix. The owner is not in there mopping floors, bro. Mm. He's not in there at the cashier. He's not mm. the cashier. He's somewhere on a yacht somewhere in Miami enjoying his best life. Yeah. So I think what a lot of people have to understand is start off hustling and building your business, but keep the long term vision in place, which mm. is to automate and delegate and remove yourself. So, you know, by the end of the year, I'm looking to fire myself and hire an office manager for my role. Mm. So how how'd you go about building your your team though? Like it's because I mean, like you said, you said it's like a conveyor belt. You listed from boom to from here to here to here the amount of people that that goes through. So how right. do you go about you know find those your, your team? I'm educating myself, bro. I, I've I have been to so many seminars. I spent five thousand dollars for a one day seminar learning how to systematize a business. This guy's a millionaire. He's younger than me. You know what I mean? This guy's doing three million dollars a year. He systematized the business. And it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. You know, Absolutely. So let, let, let me bring everyone in the audience, you know, a little bit uh, down to earth real quick and just talk to me. Obviously, we had this whole conversation about wholesaling, but talk to me. Someone something like this. Someone out there is going to be inspired based off what you're saying and looking to get into real estate wholesaling. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to make a lot of money and all that. What would be the first thing you tell them? Right. What would be the thing? Like, all right. Here. Here's, you know, whether it's watching YouTube videos, driving for dollars, educating oh, yourself. Oh, easy. Um, mindset, man. Change your mindset. Like, you have to go from thinking in scarcity, which is, ah, I got to close this deal. I got I to gotta make all the money on this, on this deal. I'm, I got to close this deal and make all the money to abundance. If I did a quarter million dollars in a day, mm. you see other people in your market closing deals and making money. It's more property out here. So abundance, you have to go from scarcity, meaning it's a lack. In, your, mind, your mindset is it's the only deal left and you're going to get over on somebody and finesse them or whatever to abundance. 
Mm. Hey, if this guy doesn't sell the property to me, I know someone else is coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's that, the biggest shift I had to make, mindset. And focus on providing value. I know it sounds cliche, but it's really the truth. If you provide value, you will make more money. That's why Amazon makes so much money. He provides outstanding customer service and value. I ordered something from Amazon two days ago. It was here this morning before I went to home. <laughs> That is value. You yeah. go you go to McDonald's, what, what are they going to tell you? I don't have this. I don't have that. The machine is broke. That's why people don't value it as much. They spend more money at Chick-fil-A. But you know what? Let me play devil's advocate real quick for, for, for those people out there. I don't have a lot of money, man. I'm not worried about value right now. I'm worried about getting my pockets right. Yeah, I want to help people, but, you know, how, how can I do that if I don't have any money? What would you say to that? I would say that the, big, the biggest thing is you would, you would also still need to understand the long-term the long-term play like you you'll be in and out of this business if you think like that mm -hmm. so again it, it goes back to your mindset you got to focus on the long-term picture like i tell people all the day man don't don't burn bridges and ruin relationships in the beginning because it's hard to recover from that i would rather take less money now because this is the thing let's say you you was hoping to make 10 grand on a deal but you only made 2500 number one it's more money than you had yesterday facts number two Nobody can ever take that experience away from you, right? And number three, it's always it's a, it's a new learning lesson. But number, and also, I'll add, add on number three, it's always going to be another deal, man. Mm. Mm. It's the truth. Yeah. It's always going to be another deal, man. And I that's mean, why, you know, you, you can't force it, right? You know, if, right. if it's not there, it's not there. You can't, you can't force it, man. Because if you force it, you're going to make a mistake that's going to cost you. Mm. So, I mean, you. You, you, you reach a lot of success in, the, in this wholesaling game, but Tell me one time where you feel like you you messed up. I don't like to use a failed word like that, but a deal that you was like, all right, damn, I I was kind of wild. Or maybe, you know. Oh, I yeah. Just, I, 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 I had, you know, I had a deal on the contract when I first got started. And, and I tell people this from experience. You know, it was a nice lady, man. Got the property on the contract. I just knew I had a buyer. The buyers were like, nah, it's too high. It's too high. The numbers don't work. The deal sucks. And, you know, it, it was unfortunate because she really needed the money. Hmm. And at that point in my life, I started, I started looking at it a little bit different. Like, okay, it's not about just making the money. You know what I mean? It's not mm -hmm. about, oh, I'm going to get this old lady to sign the contract. I'm going to make yeah. some money for her. You know what I mean? It, yeah. was, it started to become bigger than that. Yeah. And I started looking at things like, okay, let me make sure my contracts are tight and I'm working with integrity 100%. Now, I broke the news to her that the deal wasn't going to work, but it took me 30 days to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't have a buyer in a week or, or ten days max, really a week. If I don't have a if I don't have a buyer in a week, I'm canceling. Right. But I put that seven in my days. contract as well. I have a seven day due diligence period. Okay, not thirty. That's that's to protect me, but also to be respect respectful of their time. You know yeah. what I mean? I'd rather tell you in seven days no, as opposed to thirty days and me stringing you along. It's like. It's almost like dating, right? You're dating somebody, you think that person may like you, and then they come, ah, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, let's not waste our time. What, what, what happened? What changed? <laughs> you, sometimes you don't need 30 days to know. when. Exactly. You, let's, exactly. Let's cut ties and keep it pushing. Right. Um, but I also want to talk to you, man, about numbers, because some people have, you know, an easy, you know, easy time finding properties. Like right now, right, if someone was driving around their neighborhood and they stumbled across a property that looked vacant, Right. Mm -hmm. What's the next step to really determining the value of that specific home that way? Because, yeah, you don't want like you said, it's a numbers game. Right. right? So even though I find a crib, I'm also right. not trying to throw a garbage number to someone. Right. 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 How, right. how, how does someone figure out that? So the next step would be it depends on what resource they have. If they have access to uh, MLS or FMLS, which is what realtors have access to. My partner's a realtor and I have two realtors on my team. So I really get to see the really, really granular numbers. But if you don't have access to that, I'm assuming they don't. I would go to Zillow and just really take a look at, scroll all the way down and see what the houses are selling for in that neighborhood in that same condition. Hmm. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. And, and one thing too, I'll, I'll add on to that when it comes to driving for dollars. I was going to ask you too, if you had like a strategy when it came to driving for dollars. But one thing I did um, was on Zillow was look up like pre foreclosures and just kind of you mm -hmm. know, see where they were on the map right. and then drive in certain areas. You know what I mean? So, um, okay. That's not a bad strategy. What I would do, I would network number one and really this is another thing I do. It's it's a uh it's called it's a it's a magazine called Atlanta Business Chronicle. This is a magazine catered toward business and real estate investing. They tell you exactly what's going on. Hey, it was a new development over here in this part of Connecticut. Hey, it was a development over here on this part. So 
I'm going to those areas and see if I can find a house like you just discussed, a beat up and raggedy house. Because mm. if they're developing over there, that means something else is coming. Mm. So I would tell somebody, my best strategy would be find the ugliest house you can if you're going to drive for dollars. Get on Zillow, see what the houses are selling for over there. Probably find a free app called Been Verified, or you can go to www.skipsourcedata.com and we'll get you all the phone numbers. Oh, oh yeah, plug, plug in, plug in. We'll, plug we'll, in. we'll drop that down there for you. I got, and again, I own that software company, but I can get you records back in less than uh, 25 minutes. Right, so um, so plug that in right But if you're on a budget, hey, if you're on a budget, I definitely understand. My next step would be go to Zillow, see what the houses are selling for that looks like yours. I would look at that Zestimate also, and I would probably offer probably 60% below that. Hmm. Mm. 60 to 70 percent below that that's tough so again to put because I, I like to put things into perspective and provide right. even more content so let's say again crib was a hundred thousand 60 percent off whatever that means forty thousand right how in the world can i convince someone who has a crib that's worth a hundred thousand to give it to me for forty thousand dollars how can i do oh, this is the, this is the thing you you can't assume you can't assume they know it's worth a hundred thousand oh. and if it's worth a hundred thousand that's a hundred thousand dollars fixed up mm. The house that we're talking about is beat up and raggedy. So I'm basing it off the big four, condition. Sir, the condition of this property lets me know it's going to need a certain amount of repairs, number one. Number two, sir, how soon do you want to get rid of this property? Because if you want to get rid of it soon, I can give you 40 grand. Sir, how much, what price do you have in mind? So maybe we can meet in the middle at another price. And then what's your, you know, what's your timeline? Mm. How, how soon are you look, look, looking to get something done? But most importantly, why do you want to sell it? Mm. Are you tired of doing repairs? Because it looks like it. Mm. That, that that's 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 the mindset shift you ever face a seller and, I, and i'm sure a lot of wholesalers i'm sure you have faces at least once you ever face um a a, a wholesaler or excuse me a seller that um threatened to sue you uh yes because i sent her some direct mail yeah she threatened oh, that's, to sue that's me. another that's another market <laughs> yeah she threatened to sue me because i sent her some direct mail you know and it, it's all good that's that's part of the game i didn't send her any more after that I, again, I'm the type of person, if you tell me no, I back off. Yeah. Well, in she sent it to her one time and she said, all right. Yeah, if, she, yeah, she, if I send it to you one time, you did okay, okay, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> you got I, it. <laughs> she, yeah, she wrote me a letter and all. I still have it. <laughs> but, so what did you do? I, I know you were scared. I know. Oh, what? Yes, I was scared. I was like, man. I, I, yeah, I, I, I peeled back on direct mail marketing for a little bit. <laughs> because of that? <laughs> yeah, then I crank it back up. I'm like, man, oh, well, she'll be okay. I just yeah. took her off my list. That's what I did. I took her off my list. Yeah. So so how did you bounce back, though? I mean, I know, like I said, she it sounded like she didn't sue you and that mm -hmm. you stopped direct mail. But I mean, you know, psychologically and mentally, I'm sure that can, you know. Oh, that was demoralizing. Down. I'm like, yeah. man, she was serious. I mean, she... She wrote me a letter, man. A handwritten letter. She wrote it. That's crazy. She took her time to write me and let me know. You know that's, what I mean? Um, so what I did was um, I, I just tweaked my marketing. Mm -hmm. I took her off all of my marketing campaigns, and I doubled down on cold calling and text blast. Mm -hmm. It's more talk than one way to skin a cat, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really need you to talk to me even more about the text blast. And I'm going to say okay. that because there's going to be some people that are nervous to talk on the phones. Because when you're talking on the phone, you got to react immediately. Or you got to right. react instantly and you really have to know what to talk about. At least right. when you're texting, you can like go back, you know, to the drama. So board. I would say, I would say number one, get over not wanting to talk on the phone because if they seriously want to do business with you, they're going to want to talk to you on the phone. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to talk? And you have to think about it like this too. Wouldn't you want to talk to somebody on the phone that's telling you they're going to give you a hundred grand for a home that's beat mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro, you tell me you give me $500. Let's talk. I need to hear your voice. I need to hear the tone of your voice. Mm. That's just me. So you don't have to be me on the phone, but somewhat knowledgeable. But before you get there, um, I was sent out a text. It sent out a campaign. Sent out a text blast campaign, right? And it's something simple as, hey, my name is John. I'm a local investor. I saw your property at blah, blah, blah street. I'm looking to pick up one to two properties uh, by the end of the year in that neighborhood. Your property looks like a... Um, a property that I may be interested in. Bam. Would, you be, would you be interested in the cash offer for the property? Bam. And then, and then you just wait. Yep, you wait on them to text you back. They text you back, what's your offer? Okay, great. Um, To get you the best offer, what would be a good time to talk to you about this so we could discuss it further? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's nothing like that on the phone, on the phone conversation. Nothing like yeah. it. Oh, facts, facts, facts. Because you have to think about it. The same thing you said about being quicker on your feet, they do too. 
right? Yeah. So when you're talking to them and negotiating, they have to be quick with their answers and they have to think things through as well. So it's kind of it's kind of like a, a double edged sword. <clears throat> but you don't. But you don't use your personal number though, right? You don't. Of course use not. Number. No sir. No sir. Okay. You can go. You can use a Google Plus number for free. It's it's a lot of websites out here that will give you a number for maybe little to nothing a month. Yeah. Do you now, when I first number? started, when I first started, yes, I was using my number because I didn't care and I didn't have any money. So well, yeah, everybody does. I, I think at first, all right, hey, I don't know anything else. I got my own phone. Let's do it. Right, right. Like, let's hey, go. if y'all listen to this, be careful. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah. Yeah. You get a Google Plus number. It's free. It's free. Yeah, it's free. You know, it's legit, but be careful. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the text blast thing, do you do you have a software of your own that you use? Absolutely, skill source data. I have okay. text blasting, RVM. Uh, and we're working, we have a call center as well. Me and my partner, we're looking to put that plan together for people to come in. You know, we can we can get you some cold callers as well. So yeah, yeah for sure. You know, the sure. mindset shift is the mindset shift is from us making all the money to putting other people in position to make some money. Mm. That's kind of where we've shifted a little bit now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, other other people, as in um, other investors. Other, okay, other investors. All right. You, you mentioned something too, RVM. Can you just tell us all? Yeah, so so basically, yeah. So RVM is basically ringless voicemail. What yeah. happens is we send out a campaign and it's a pre-recorded message from one of my uh, ladies in the office. Hey, my name is Courtney. Uh, I'm a local real estate investor. The same thing as the text. I was looking at a property in that area and, you know, hey, yours looks like a, a great property. It looks like it may fit our buying criteria, whatever it says, right? Um, if you were interested in a cash offer, could you please press one? And mm -hmm. someone from our team will give you a call back in 24 to $40. So what happens next is it drops it on their phone. And then they, it, a voicemail pops up on their phone. Mm. And they listen to the voicemail. What's, what's dope about that is there's a call to action. Absolutely. Right, right. Call to action. And it's a phone number. that So press one or call this number back or something like that. Mm. And yeah. the number route and the number routes to the call center, and we have someone there there pick it up and go through the whole pre-qualification spiel. And if they meet that criteria and they still sound serious, we push it to my guys in the office. Mm. It gets on the conveyor belt. What what they what they call that? A, a hot lead? Hot leads, yes. And we yeah. only want hot and warm leads. Any cold <laughs> that's leads, it. I don't touch them. That's I don't that's, see it. Them. that's it. And there's always um, like you mentioned before, a follow-up. Right, absolutely. If they're not with it in the beginning, because because again, they, they may not be ready to, to sell on that first phone call. Yeah, you're just, you're just building your pipeline up with leads. I mean, we had a guy, we made fifty thousand dollars on his house. The guy was a follow up from three months ago. Patience is a virtue. That's what they patience, say, right? Man, patience. It's a numbers game because I tell my guys in the office, this is this is not average money that we're seeing. This is not the money you're gonna see at a regular job, man. Fifty grand, quarter million dollars. Especially the speed. Yeah, the speed. Like it's like, it's like we, you said, you're getting yeah, deals in probably two weeks. I'm getting I'm getting them closed in, in probably 10 to 14 days. Seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so talk to me though, because I that was gonna be a question I had about pace and the pressure that you get it done within a two week or, or, or seven day span. And it's like, all right, we're starting on, I don't know, July 1st. By this date, we're closing this. How, how's that? So uh, remember, we, we build the contracts out for about 30 days anyway. Mm. So we set the expectation with the seller that I can close this property in a few weeks. Worst case scenario, a month. Now, understand the traditional route when you go with a realtor is about three to six months. Possibly. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not going to be a month. Most of the time, if you deal with a realtor, because you have to understand what is the expectation for most people when they hear the word real estate? Realtors. Right. The, and then that leads into most people believing a real estate transaction may take a few months. So if I'm offering you speed and convenience, but I just ask you to take less money, you'll be more inclined to work with me if I can get the deal done in 30 days or less. Mm. And I get them done in 14. Mm. So that's that's people really, want to get it going. Like, come on, just, yeah, they want to get it going again. Price, timeline to sell. Why you want to sell it? Condition. In this case, time timeline time. is important to you. So if, if you want to wait and wait on the realtor, then be my guest. But I can get you done in a couple of weeks, but I need you to take less money. That, that's how you reverse it on them. Like, hey, if you want to wait, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, again, I, yeah. By the time I by the time, by the time I get off the phone with you, my guy will have two more people to call. Mm. Like we, we got things to do. You, it's it's because again, it's another day at the office for us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, and plus two, it's not your property. So mm-hmm. it's like, all right, you know, we want it'd be nice to have the property, but we're not about to. You yeah. just said what uh, was it a thousand a week or a thousand a day properties that you that you contact a thousand, about a thousand properties a week, man. Like we, yeah. we you know, it's it's we see a lot of properties. So I love to work with you, but I mean, if you don't want to play by my rules, then I'm moving on to the next one. Yeah, and, and tell me more about that though, like not being so stuck on a, a cold lead or someone that's rejecting you, and understand like, yo, we are here to close deals, not necessarily to be efficient. Right. right. That, I, I tell that, my guy, just because they, they talk to you on the phone does not mean they're going to sell the property to you. And I had to learn that a long time ago. Yeah. I'm on the phone. I went to church with this one lady. She still didn't sell me the house. <laughs> oh, <I> mean, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's cool. I went to church with us. I put, a whole, I put on a whole suit, dude. <laughs> she, still, she called me two weeks later. Yeah. You know, the other guy offered me $1,000 more, and I went with him. Oh, wow. You should have asked, did he go to church with you? <laughs> That's what I would ask. Did he go to church with you? Right. <laughs> you're such a nice young man. I just wanted to tell you and call you and tell you that. Okay. Oh, I know you're sick. You didn't tell I me know the problems, you're ma'am. So yeah. That's the yeah. Other, that's sacrifice. <laughs> I, I, Absolutely. I'm so um, another thing too is when it comes to organization, right? Is again right. a thousand properties a week. And uh-huh. that's just, you know, ones that you're contacting and all that. How do you stay on top of track of all of that? I know you have a team, but you know, for someone that might be getting started outside of drive for dollars, they, if they do decide to download, they need, a, they need a CRM. I all again, this is not on paper and pencil. This is in a CRM that we use. Hmm. It's a software. Uh, we're using Investor Fuse right now. Uh, we're about to switch to po- uh, not Podio, but so I started off with Podio. It, it's it's Podio. more rookie. If you're if you're new, Podio. Um, if you have a little bit more money to invest, Investor Fuse is about two fifty a month. Hmm. Number three, Pipe Drive. That's where we're going next. Because pipe drive lets me see more analytics. Mm. So I can forecast the business. So definitely get you some type of CRM. Basically, what the CRM does is stores their phone number, email. It reminds you when to call back. Uh, you can send a text through a lot of these CRMs and things like that. You know what I mean? Customer resource manager. Yeah. So that's where you store the leads at. Mm-hmm. But there, there's you another type uh, the address uh, in and call them back. Real simple. But there, there, there's another uh, one that starts with a P that I, I don't think you mentioned. Uh, how you feel about prop stream? Prop stream is pretty good, but I don't I don't really like it as a CRM. Hmm. It's more of a it's more of an investing software where you can pull information and stuff like that. But as far as a CRM, I wouldn't use it for a CRM. Hmm. Okay. Because you because the, th- the thing is with with prop stream you can't send text off of that. Hmm. I don't think you can email blast and do RVM either. Yeah. So you know what I mean. So it's like with our CRM. My cold callers, they send the leads to the CRM. Make sense? Mm-hmm. So it pops up on the screen and we look at the information and call that person. Okay. So what do you, you mentioned cold callers. What do you look for in a cold caller? Um, experience, experience cold calling. How, what, what's the accent like? You know, and I, again, I don't want to offend anybody, but uh, we use Filipinos because their first language is English. Mm-hmm. They're English speaking people first. So mm-hmm. they're a little bit more relatable they, and the, the pronunciation, if you will, is a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Than some cold calls in other countries, and are they coachable? And are they are do you have do you have a phone and do you have legitimate Wi Fi? I know it, mm-hmm. us living in America, it sounds like a dumb thing, but you'd be yeah, surprised. That's real. Do you have yeah. legitimate Wi Fi? Yeah, but so I mean, if that's the case, then too think about it, those that are in America. Is, is it crazy to say that all you need to get started is a phone and Wi Fi? Absolutely, phone Wi Fi determination. If you have those and you and you're resilient and, and you know in your heart this is what you want to do no matter what, you'll get a deal done. Mm. But you have to just tune out all the BS. And most importantly, what are you going to sacrifice, man? I think I, I talked about it on my post today. What are you going to sacrifice? Like instead of watching the game last night, you should have been calling somebody, asking do they want to sell property. They're mm. home watching the game because that's what most people are doing. Yeah. Do you, you know? have do you have do you have a time um in which like you feel is best to contact your sellers? Um, nine to 12, five to eight, nine, nine to 12. 12. Most people are headed to work or they may be on a lunch break or something like that. Five to eight. Most people are home by mm-hmm. then. They picked the kids up from soccer games and they've made dinner. They're watching the NBA playoffs or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 That's no, leisure nothing, time. Right. For most people. Not, nothing, uh, nothing on the weekends. Nothing on a oh, Sunday. Excuse, oh, of course the weekend. Definitely. Saturday. We, we market seven days a week. My cold call is called seven days a week. Hmm moving marketing never stops marketing is life moving and like 
to put all this into perspective, man, obviously it's your life. So obviously you know yourself better than anyone. But so you went from what selling phones to start off where we first, you know, were selling phones was a teacher. You felt like you weren't making that much. And now I want to read out a tweet or, you know, that, that you put out. Mm-hmm. Your wholesaling business is on the verge of hitting two mil revenue, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How, how, how does that make you feel to know that? Um, I would probably say I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful to say the least. I'm very grateful. Um, Cause I mean, <clears throat> it's been a long time coming, man. It's been a lot of bumps and bruises and, and, and I had to learn a lot along the way. So I'm grateful. I mean, I'm hungry for more. I don't, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe that's, that's the end. I think it's just the beginning for me. Um, and I think, I, and I'm grateful, man. That's really the biggest thing. I'm grateful, man. I'm really, I'm not the most flashy person. I mean, you go to my page, you wouldn't really know, you know what I mean? But I'm grateful, man. You know what I mean? I'm grateful. This is just the beginning. This is a stepping stone for me to get into the next level, which is multifamily syndications. Mm. I want to raise private money and buy apartments, mm. you know? And, and, and two, and one thing that I said before, you know, um, before we actually started recording was you talked to me about Airbnb. Um, is there, is that like a, another goal for you that you want to uh, tap into? Absolutely. Um, so with Airbnb, it's more of a, um, an investment for me um, as far as a, um, passive income. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, you know, when you hear about passive income in real estate, most people are talking about rental properties, but with Airbnb arbitrage, you can really just rent a part a property out of an apartment out to someone else and make the same money. Really more money if you think about it. Because mm-hmm. yeah. when you have to think about it, when you when there's a rental property, that one person is paying you every month yeah. or that family or whatever. Airbnb, multiple people are paying you. And you're probably double what you do yeah. with a rental property. You know what I mean? So I think Airbnb is, you know, it's something I'm investing in. I don't think it's a long-term play where I'm gonna get 50 of them, you know what I mean? Because I don't want that type of overhead. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's definitely an investment. But you know what, though, man? You have the luxury of being in Atlanta. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like yeah, you said, I never, You never know. Oh, yeah, I mean, of course. So, but just in general, how is it, man? Do you, like, do you, I know, you know, the majority of your business is in Atlanta, but do you ever um, invest in properties, like, in different states? And if so, how's that? Yeah, so we're, Mark, so we're in Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. and we're in Birmingham, Alabama. We're in those three markets as far as my wholesaling business. Yeah. Um, me, personally... I'm looking to invest in the Midwest. I want to go to the Midwest and get and buy duplexes uh, mm. because you can find a du. Number one, you 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 can't find a duplex in that matter. Mm. They they're either sold or nobody wants to sell them. You know what I mean? Because fair, it's fair. hard to find here. Fair. This this is not the market for that. This market is a single family home market for the most part, right? Mm. And you have some trailer parts and stuff like that too. It's still Georgia, it's still rural. But um, I want to go in the Midwest because it's cheaper there. And you'll get a better return on investment. Right. You know, you can buy a pro, you can buy a duplex in the Midwest for probably sixty grand. You know, and you could probably cash flow cash flow that at about maybe twelve, fourteen hundred a month, which is great. You know what yeah. I mean? Hell yeah! I mean, we always talk about ROI too, man. And I mean, again, going back to earlier, one of your first deals, you said you had your earnest was a hundred dollars, and you ended up, you know, turning that into way more than hundred dollars. Absolutely. So, I mean, the biggest lesson here, y'all, just ROI, returning your investment every time. Um, but one of the final questions, man, that I wanted to leave you with um, is, it's a question I ask everyone on, on this show as we conclude, um, is how do you want to be remembered? Okay, cool, man. Um, I want to be remembered for as someone who didn't live with any regret, re- regrets. You know, my dad, he's a great guy. He's a good man, but he was in the military, right? He was a Marine. He would always tell me, Hey, son, you know, if I would have stayed in the Marines and I would have stayed in the military, I could have gave you um, whatever the, uh, what's the loan they give you? The loan when your oh, kids I, go to I, college. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he was like, man, you know, you wouldn't have all this student loan debt if yeah. I would have stayed in the military. I could have been able to pay for you to go to college. Mm-hmm. And he would always say that to me. And I, and I started to become like, man, I never want to live a life with regrets. You know what I mean? So I always want to be known for someone that really went for it left it all on the table, but really put his family in a position to win and create something I like to call Robinson privilege. What is that? I want to create a privilege where my family doesn't have any financial issues. They're educated properly on how to keep the money, but most importantly, mul- multiply all the money that I've made for our, our, our family and you know, leave my family assets, man, and create wealth forever. You know what I mean? I own that trademark. Um, that's why I say it so much. 
And that's that's my biggest thing. Leg, you know, I, I like to say legacy over liabilities, man. So build something that will outlast me and put my family in a position to uh thrive and not just survive. That's kind of that's kind of my biggest thing. I know it may sound cliche, but that's no, but no, but that's true. real though. Thriving instead of just surviving. I mean, you talked about mm-hmm. it before, man. The idea of like scarcity in, in versus abundance. Right. Like thinking and, and understand that you can always have more, right? right. Like there, there isn't like a cap or limit, you know, on your income. Um, Cause I mean, you go from roughly, you know, that's, you know, you go from roughly what, 2K a month to now owning, you know, being part of a business that's bringing in two M's revenue. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's Great. a testament to, to your hard work and just overall, you know, staying at it, you know, cause that was one thing I, I was wondering too, is like, I think originally in wholesaling, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Correct me if I'm wrong in terms absolutely, of the absolutely. Knowledge and it's that. a lot. It's a lot. I, I don't want people to feel as if this is easy. This, this business is, is simple, not easy. Mm. The theory is simple. Mm. You are going through a diver- divorce, right? Or you're behind on taxes. You have a property, an asset that you can liquidate, sell it to me for less than you know what market value is. I sell it to another investor that has some other plans for it to, you know, put a new roof on it or what have you. I make a fee in between. Hmm. Simple, right? But it's not easy. Some people may want more money. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that that's tough to do, man. The the off market value and getting it at a discount. Right. And that part, I think the number so, stuff you can figure out, the people, you know, people person. All right. You can this is the thing a lot of people have to understand. Crazy. We are shooting at a five to ten percent percentage of people 90% of people want retail value for their property and rightfully so i understand yeah, yeah. that right what what did you want the most if you had a pair of shoes and you sold them you want the most that's normal absolutely but sometimes the 5 to 10% you know man i just caught a flat tire i don't have any money in my savings wait a minute i had a playstation here let me pawn that yep what happens when you go to the pawn shop you that's paid $400 for this playstation i'll give you 150 Man, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> Damn. And the thing is, all you gotta do is like stumble upon like one deal, right? That's it. You you you're one deal away. One deal will change your life. It changed mine. Mm. Bro, you gotta think about it. I made fifteen grand on one deal. That's that's probably seventy five percent of my uh, teaching salary. Uh, one deal. <laughs> one deal. I did one deal. I said, man, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Why? Why would I go back? I made fifteen grand in a day. Hmm. Tax free. Tell me, all right. When you first, I said that was my last question, but I got another one because now you're talking. So, when when you got when that wire hit your account, right? It was the mm-hmm. first of many. But how was that feeling? Uh, it was it was a feeling of confirmation hmm. that it works. I I again, I was in a group, so I, I saw other people make money, but it's nothing like. And when I say, in I'm I'm gonna keep it real with you, bro. I did not get a wire transfer. I got a check because I wanted to feel it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I need to look see, at it I'm myself gonna... and I need to make sure all the numbers are right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I took a picture of it. I framed it on my wall. Facts. I mean, it was confirmation because, you know, the thing about life is you believe in things and you have faith and all that good stuff. You know, all, all the uh, abstract stuff, right? Right, 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 right. Faith, I believe, motivated. But until it really happens, man, it's almost like getting drafted in the NFL. Until they call your name, yeah, you don't feel as if you're a pro football player yet. But you know when they I mean? do call your name, you start. That's why the guys cry so much when they get when they get drafted. Like, man, all this hard work and all these great things the football coaches told me to do, it finally paid off. Mm. I'm actually an NFL football player. So it was confirmation, <laughs> confirmation, and it confirmed that it works. Faith is real. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will be rewarded for your hard work. Yeah. And if this guy can sell me a property that cheap, it's going to be more people in the same situation. Yeah. They need my help. That's one of Yeah, that's a, a great way to look at it, too. People are going to need your help. Not just right. Thing. People are going if, you, help. if you'll sell it that low, somebody else will, too. Facts. Well, yeah, man. You know, look, man. I know for a fact people can get some out of this episode. I appreciate it. You know, between, you know, your story... And you providing gems, people are gonna get something out, out of this episode. So one thing I'm gonna have you do, man, if you before you leave, if you don't mind, just drop your social media, plug in your business, all that, you know, run, run absolutely, run crazy man, absolutely, promo, definitely, man. Um, definitely, man. Let me uh, drop this here. I didn't know you followed me on uh, Twitter, man. I, I've been kind of getting on there recently. Twitter, you know, it's funny. Instagram and YouTube is really what's running the world right now, right? Um, for for good reason, I get it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, it's one of those, uh, you know, things where just, hey, content is everywhere. Right. Now, another thing, too, I want to say is like, you know, with content being everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, podcast, YouTube, as you mentioned before, like that's kind of how you started your journey. Right. It's all free. <laughs> like, they don't cost anything to follow the right people, you know. Um, and, you know, I can't, you know, I can't, uh, can't complain too much, man. Absolutely. But yeah, no, 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 no. You can, you can tell us, like, say, like, say. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah uh, my so bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't know. My investing yeah, yeah, no. software, uh, www.skipsourcedata.com. That's www.skipsourcedata.com. Uh, we have RVM, Text Blast. Uh, I'm working on the cold calling part. You can get skip tracing for LLC. Skip tracing is pretty much um, where they give you the phone number and email of these sellers instead of you having to go and do it the hard way like I did, I can get it to you in probably 25, maybe 30 minutes max. Um, and the important thing is I can get you information on LLCs because a lot of businesses and, you know, in buyers, they use LLCs for tax purposes, yeah. right? Um, if you need a list of people who are behind on taxes, I have that as well, pre-foreclosure, any type of distressed seller list that you need to really boost your marketing up and ramp up your process and make it quicker, I have it on that software for you. And on social media, man, I'm Wealth Forever. You know, W-E-A-L-T-H underscore, underscore, uh, forever, F-O-R-E-V-E-R. Yes, That's sir. where you can find me on any social media. So, yes, you know, sir. we'll have the T-shirts coming out soon once the uh, once the trademark um, paperwork is officially in. Yeah, yeah, get 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 the get the merch out there, man. You say you have Got a course to, on the way, right? You have a course. You say what? Way? You have a course on the way too? Absolutely, I'm working on the course right now. Um, okay. I, you know, I re I had one originally, but I wanted to revamp. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I kind of took some time away from working with people to teach them the business to make sure my business is doing what it needs to do. Mm-hmm. And apparently, that strategy worked, right? So yeah, I think now, so. now I, I can free so. up some time to really work with people and bring them along. You know, I tell people. You can't save other people until you save yourself, man. Mm. What does that mean? Save yourself. Make sure your money is right, your credit is right before you start, you know, telling people what to do with their money and their credit. Yeah. And yeah. it's okay to take a step back and just get right with yourself. You have to, man. You have to because, again, you you can't save everyone else unless you save yourself first. I mean, that's the truth. Facts. Y'all, listen, y- listen, y'all heard the man, you know, fire, fire, fire episode. Appreciate you again, man. Again, Marquise Robinson killing the game in Atlanta. Real estate wholesaling now, Airbnb. Gonna have some merch soon. Gonna have the course shop it, soon. Uh, we definitely gotta stay in touch too, though, man. Cause I know absolutely, uh, man. Let me let me know next time you're in Atlanta, man. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, we definitely because that's another uh city, you know, I'm gonna tap into some more. I got a cousin down there um who's actually wholesaling or looking uh-huh. into a real estate wholesaling. Mm. Um, so I'm make sure he tap into yeah, send me, send, send me that info. I definitely would love to connect with him and do some deals, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. You know, give me your information and have him. You know, looking to all your content, everything like that, man. But again, appreciate you, man. Is there anything you want to say um, as we wrap up? Any last words? Oh, uh, man, I just tell your audience, man, What whatever you want to do, whether it's real estate, entrepreneurship, man, listen, man, stick with it, sacrifice, have faith, and see it through, man. That, that's the biggest thing. Whatever you want to do, understand that family is not going to support you until you really start taking off. Mm-hmm. It's the truth. They, it's just, it is what it is. So don't take it personal. Keep going. And just focus on, you know, whatever your long-term goals are, man. It, it'll happen, but it's not going to be overnight. But it's going right. to be worth it. Right. Keep going. Don't give up. And listen, it sounds cliche. But it's the truth. the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. Keep going. Don't stop. If this is the beginning of your wholesaling journey, if this episode is what sparks the interest for you, run. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, man, fire episode. Appreciate it. Um, and we out, y'all.